what would you say to him is one proof that he can look at to, to confirm that Islam is the Quran is not a man-made book and Islam is not a man-made religion is indeed from the divine being an expert in the Quran well um, lots can be said um, I'd start off by my own journey to share can you hear a him a couple of things can you quickly? hear him Andrew I can hear yeah, yeah, yeah. okay uh, nice talking to you uh, I think that I what I like to do uh, when I meet with audiences uh, professors of other faiths and you know intellectuals anybody uh, is that I like to invite them to explore the Quran um, you know intellectually and critically uh, that's an invitation that the Quran gives it's interesting that people perceive religion as something that you have to be indoctrinated into and you have to follow it as the dictates are and you don't have to actually critically ask any questions or think and contemplate and the Quran it's kind of unique in the way that it presents its message because it's constantly saying, don't you then think? Don't you contemplate? Haven't you asked questions? This is a book for those who seek to ask, uh, to have answers. It's not actually asking you to shut your brain off and accept what it's saying. It's actually asking you to contemplate its message. So it stands really unique in that sense. Um, my own, you know, since it offered that invitation to me, I didn't come to the Quran first as someone who believes in it, as wanted to figure this thing out and you know try to make sense of it um, and many of the things that I struggled with in philosophy when I was a student of philosophy they started getting unraveled as I was getting deeper and deeper in my study of the Quran it just started kind of untying a lot of those knots and it's also remarkable that some of the biggest addictions that people suffer from every one of them is targeted one after the other in the Quran Right, some of the things that plague humanity more, like gambling, for example, alcohol, for example, intoxication, for example. Like each of these things is targeted, and you think it's not just a, solving a Muslim problem; it's solving a human problem, it's solving a societal problem, it's solving a global problem by targeting these each each of these specific things. Um, the other thing that I would that, you know, that really fascinated me, I ended up writing a book on it, ended up getting taught around the world. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's even being used. Um, in one of the Islamic studies courses at Harvard now uh, is divine speech it, it's a book I dedicated along with my student to why is this book why is this book why am I believing that it's divine what's making me think this and I wrote it for a non-muslim audience actually uh, it's a little bit academic but the point of it was there are there are elements to this book and the way that it's structured that if you first if you went to the library or you got on Amazon and bought yourself a translation of the Quran you started reading it you think the subject is kind of going all over the place Right, it's 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 not staying on the same subject, right? It's saying some profound things, but the organization seems unlike anything I've ever read, uh, and that was one of the things that baffled me at first. Like, why is it organized in this way? And so, I, one of the areas of my study became the organization of the Quran. Why is it organized in this way? Why is God talking in this disarray? And what I discovered was something absolutely breathtaking: that it's it's got a symmetrical structure that you'll have a chapter, for example, that's hundreds of verses, like Baqarah is 286 verses. It's an oral tradition, so it wasn't written first, it was recited and pronounced and memorized in that way. Amounts to about 50 pages in Arabic, right? But if you study the subject matter, the, 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 the nine subjects that are occurring in this long 50-page discourse are like subject one is directly tied to subject nine, and two to eight, and three to seven, and four to six, and five d right center in the middle. Like there's an incredible three-dimensional structure to the way the argument's being presented. Like human beings, we think linear, right? I'm gonna make point A, then I'm gonna make point B, then I'm gonna make point C. That's how I organize my thoughts. And unless you write something down and say, you know what, I'm gonna do this, and just for fun, I'm gonna do A, B, C, and then go C, B, A, Right? Even doing that in, in six sentences is hard for me as I'm sitting here talking to you because my brain isn't wired that way. But this thousand, you know, millennium and a half old tradition has got multiple surahs and multiple chapters where this kind of a structure is demonstrated over and over again and other kinds of structures are like, this is not possible for a human being to do. Linguistically, it's not possible. I'm a, stu a student of linguistics. It's just not possible. These kinds of structures, this kind of organization. That, that's one of the things I wrote about in the book. And I started, ended up teaching courses on this stuff. Um, but for just, at a, just to take a step back level, 
my invitation to anybody is put your preconceived notions aside. Take what you may have heard about Islam, what you may have thought about it from your own faith traditions point of view. Put all of that aside. And you know, I, I wouldn't even invite somebody to read the Quran to accept Islam. Read the Quran neutrally and get a first, uh, you know, an unbiased impression. And I would think it's really difficult to not walk away truly being moved by what you're what you're being exposed to, truly being hit by what you're exposed to. Uh, the, the final thing I'll say is there is a huge tragedy in the world today that even most Muslims aren't as aware of the Quran as they should be, right? So Muslims don't become a really good representation of the contents of the book, right? So even disconnecting yourself from the Muslim bias, I'm just going to read this for myself with no other influences as much as possible. At the end of the day, human beings can are going to have some bias or the other, but as much as I can consciously be disconnect it from bias and give it a shot and read it i think that that would be my invitation to anybody andrew any question any uh final question anything you'd like to ask him while he's here what happened was because we got delayed with the program he next guest was coming in so uh, <laughs> with you but this is amazing you can look him up actually online and you'll see a ton of his videos I'm his going to. I'm going to read that book as well because it was really yeah. interesting what you were saying. It was really interesting what you After were saying. After the show, about I'd like to send you a copy as a gift. And also, yeah. your invitation is exactly the way I would have done it anyway. I would have read it. I'm going to read it. I'm not, I've yet to read the Quran, but it's certainly something I'm going to do. I'm going to read it without a preconceived notion, without a preconceived idea. And I think that's the best way to do things because you're right. There's too much bias in the world. But um, from from what I know, I think we just talked about for the last hour. From what I know, I have absolute respect for the religion and respect for the faith. And I've been very. Very blessed to be on the show. So thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you're, I'm from Chicago, from Chicago also. This is your hometown. Do you visit Chicago at all? You plan on visiting um, anytime? I'll be honest with you, not too often. I, I, if I do come through, I'll, I'll hit you up. Hit I am, up. I'm, I'm politically opposed to the USA. I try and avoid it. <laughs> or, or you know what? You got your private jet. So when I go to Bosnia, I mean, you could fly. Can you fly into Bosnia? Yeah, I can absolutely. Yeah, I can come. I can come to Bosnia. My, kick, my kickboxing coach is Bosnia as well. Yeah, what was his name? Amir Subasic or Subacic. I don't know how he said Subasic. Okay. I call yeah, him. I know most. Of, I know. I know most of the, the the top guys over there, the kickboxers and everything. Would be they'd love to. So you, but you never visited Bosnia, did you? Ever put I've that yet on to your... visit. I've yet to visit, but I've heard it's an absolutely beautiful place, and and the Bosnian people are the, some of the most resilient dangerous they're the bosnian people you don't want to mess with the bosnians that's sure. <laughs> would, would you, you ever consider taking a trip how long is the plane ride from romania to bosnia uh, hour hour and a half it's not far yeah how about if i get your invitation you come down is it possible how much advance notice would you need let's keep talking about it let's do it sometime okay. this summer for sure bro let's do it okay it was, it was, it was an honor very nice talking with you brother thank you my friend all right thank, thank you god bless you. you all right peace